Here we're going to have a quick recap of the properties of a wave, um, explain what a progressive wave is, and look at polarization and some applications. So first up, waves themselves. So waves are simple oscillations, and they transfer energy, but they don't transfer particles or matter. Okay, so there's two types. There's mechanical and electromagnetic or progressive waves. So mechanical waves, they're in a substance. So for example, sound waves or waves along a string, and they vibrate and cause the vibration to be passed along. Whereas an electromagnetic or a progressive wave is a wave that distributes energy from a point and you don't necessarily need a medium to travel. Wave properties then. So there are a couple of key points we have to know about. The wavelength, which is the distance between two identical points. The displacement, which is the distance from the center of oscillation. We've got the amplitude, which is the maximum displacement, if you like, or the height of a peak. And there's a the peak in the trough. You also need to know about frequency. So frequency, if you remember, was the amount of waves that there are per second. And the time period is the inverse of the frequency, and it's the time for one complete wave. Now, two types of wave, longitudinal and transverse. First up, longitudinal. So here, the particles vibrate or oscillate parallel to the direction that the wave is travelling in. If you look carefully at one point and pick it out, you'll notice that it's not actually moving along the wave, it's just moving backwards and forwards. Okay. So here we can see compressions, which is where the particles are close together, and rarefactions, which is where they're further apart. Examples of longitudinal waves, things like, most obviously, sound. Okay. Also, seismic waves and the pushed slinky demo that we had in class. Now the second type, transverse, here the particle displacement is perpendicular to the direction of travel. Again, pick out a particle and you notice it's not moving along the wave, it's moving up and down. Okay. So examples, waves on a string, up and down slinky waves and electromagnetic waves like light. So progressive wave then. So these are the ones that transfer energy from a point to another point. Okay, but they don't transfer particles. So if we look at an example of this on two different axes, you'll notice one is distance and one is time. Both times though, the y-axis is displacement. So we can plot wavelength on the distance axis or period on the time axis. And using the period, we can obviously work out the frequency. Okay, so when you look at these in an exam, when you get a wave drawn like this, make sure you double check what the axes actually are. The y will always be displacement, but the x can be distance or time. And depending on which one it is, we can work out different things. We also have to have a quick recap of wave speed. Waves obviously transfer energy from one point to another, but it'd be nice to know how fast they're doing that. Obviously, all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, which is 300 million meters per second, or 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Now, the equation derives from speed equals distance over time, this time, instead of distance, we have wavelength, and instead of time, we have the period. Now, the period is 1 divided by the frequency. So, simply, the speed equals the frequency times the wavelength. The next thing we need to look at is polarization. So, polarization, simply put, describes the orientation that the wave oscillates in. Okay, so classically, you might have thought of the wave only oscillating up and down, but it will also, or might also, be oscillating side to side or at any angle. So polarization is about which orientation and blocking out certain orientations. Okay, so if you think about a wave traveling through a piece of paper with a slit in it, only one orientation, so in this example side to side, would be allowed to pass through. An easy way to think of this is light. Light comes in and from the sun for example it's unpolarized. Okay, so it travels and oscillates in every orientation, 360 degrees. Okay. If we put a film in the way what, that only allows the vertical component to pass through, we will only see the vertical component of the light on a screen. Okay. Now, if we've got a cross polar in addition to our vertical polar, so that's just one that's perpendicular to it, so 90 degrees we'll notice that no light can actually pass through. So the light comes in here, unpolarized, hits this vertical polarizing film, so only the vertical component passes through, as we can see here by the screen. It hits the cross polar, 
and obviously now there is no light in this side to side direction it's only up and down so no light can pass through that polar okay if however we've got a polar film that's at a slight angle so it's not vertical or horizontal a small component of the light might still be transmitted so for example we've got the unpolarized light coming in here vertically polarized in this film as we can see on the screen and if we've got an angle such as the one shown here maybe 45 degrees a small component of the light can still travel through and still be transmitted an application of this is sunglasses so in sunglasses only the vertical component of the light is allowed through this is going to help reduce glare and well help you see clearer through your sunglasses another example of this is LCD displays so they're made of two polarized films okay and they're allowed to twist and rotate to only allow certain components through if they're perpendicular to each other no light can pass through. If at a certain angle, only certain amounts of light are allowed to pass through, so producing different colours. And here's just looking at what you need to know from the spec. 